Welcome back to Feed the Post. I am your host, Joe Jackson. Today, we are back with another Big Ten basketball team preview. I'm joined by Ethan Carter. Today, we're going to talk some Illinois hoops. Ethan, how's it going? Doing well, doing well. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, I'm excited Excited to talk. Uh, Illinois is a team that um, you know had a ton of talent last year and by no means had a bad season, but was also just kind of uh, all over the place at times, it's felt like. But before we kind of dive into the upcoming season, I do want to talk about last season for just a sec. This is a team that went 20 and 13 overall, 11 and 9 in the Big Ten. They had the first round loss to Arkansas. Uh, what were just your kind of general thoughts on the year last year? There were a lot of issues. Um, locker room, it seemed, wasn't as tight as we've seen other Brad Underwood teams. Um, I think the addition of uh, Matthew Meyer kind of changed things in terms of there were a lot of games where he was a guy that they relied on to do pretty much everything. And, um, you know, he didn't do it every game. And he had a lot of inconsistencies down the stretch. Uh, Dane Danger wasn't exactly, you know, as ready as I think Illinois had hoped he'd be after sitting out the entire year a couple of years ago. Um, you know, their freshman situation was obviously not great. You saw Sky Clark leave midseason. You saw Jay Nepps uh, entering the portal after the season ended. Um, so you lost some offense there. Uh, just a lot of issues. It seemed like the team wasn't quite as tight knit as I think we've seen other Brad Underwood teams, whether it was led by, you know, I think they missed the leadership of a Trent Frazier or Demonte Williams last year. I think that that really showed, uh, but they were very talented. It just, they couldn't put it together. Um, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. And I think the locker room is probably one of the bigger reasons for that. Yeah, I agree with a lot of that. I think the the main thing is just so much talent, never able to like fully put it together to reach that um, kind of upper upper tier. And yeah, the locker room was kind of it, it is what it was. Um, you know, with the Clark leaving and all, just everything that kind of happened. But two people that will return to this year's locker room is Shannon and Hawkins, Taryn Shannon and Coleman Hawkins, both returning after testing the NBA draft waters. What does this mean for Illinois? Just getting these two talents back. Yeah, I think it kind of changes the uh, the expectation. I think it changes what they're expected to do um, all season. I think you get two guys like that back, and I know that there's a lot of fans out there uh, that watch the Illini and are kind of you know iffy on what we've seen from Coleman Hawkins. However, I think he's one of the most valuable players in the Big Ten. I think he does so many things, and I know he's got some faults, and I know he has games where he does things that are extremely boneheaded, but – I think getting a guy like him back and getting Shannon back, I think that that changes everything. I don't think that this team would be viewed where they are, which is like middle of the Big Ten, if those two weren't back. Yeah, I agree. Like they're you're returning, you know, Shannon's. There's the case for him being the second best player in the Big Ten. I love Coleman Hawkins personally, and yes, there are the flaws, and you're going to get some of the shots and passes that come with it. But there's very few if really anybody that has his skill set at his size Mm -hmm. and you know if he can i don't i don't know i go back and forth it's like do you want him to rein it in 10 percent? but is also if you do that is that taking away who coleman hawkins is yeah i think i think it probably is i think that that's a guy that um you're not gonna get a lot there from the from three point like he can shoot threes but you'd like him not to shoot as many as he did last year uh, but he also had a couple games, and the reason that he w- probably didn't shoot like 22% from threes because he had a couple games there where he was making a lot of threes. So uh, I think that I think that you have to just let him do what he wants to do. I, I just think that unless Dane Danger is actually going to take the next step this year, I think you need Coleman to bring the ball up sometimes. I think you need him to play the four. I think you need him to guard the five. I mean, we saw one thing with him, though, I will say, uh, going into this year of what I expect is that he needs to be used a little bit less. Like his usage – towards the end of the season last year was insane. He played like 48 minutes against Michigan, I think, guarding Dickinson. So, And he did well. I know Dickinson had like 30, but if you watch that game back, I mean, Hawkins was fantastic doing that in that game. But they have to figure out a way to use him less, and that's where I think there's a transfer that comes in to help uh, lessen that and then Dane Danger taking the next step. But Hawkins needs to be used a little bit less to kind of keep him fresh for late in the season. Yeah, I think that's a really fair point. And you bring up the shooting and how he was super streaky. Shannon was the same thing. Um, I, I watched the UCLA Illinois game was one of my favorite games all year, just in college basketball. And that was the the Shannon goes eight for nine from yeah. three, and uh, that was like, oh yeah, like Illinois is legit. Um, even you know, even the Virginia loss, they still look good. Mm-hmm. You're hoping for probably just a little more consistency from Shannon. He shot thirty two percent from three. Like, 
it, the percentage itself isn't terrible for how high of usage he is and some of the tougher shots that he had to take. A little more consistency would be good. He's just so good at getting downhill that like oftentimes mm -hmm. it just doesn't matter. Um, he's, I, I, I've kind of said this last year and I think I still stand by it, but like I think he's the fastest player in the Big Ten with the ball in his hands. Um, like just end to end, I don't think anybody's keeping up with him. Yeah. This kind of leads into another point of just the three point shooting in general. This was a team that shot 30.8% from three overall, 335th in the country. Only one player shot over 33%, which was Goody. And, um, you know, he was obviously limited volume just coming back off the injury. Do you think the shooting will be better this year? Is, is there signs to say that it will? I think there are signs to think that. I'm not really going to be convinced until we see it. Um, I think Justin Harmon can do it. Um, I think Damask is going to be a huge part of that. And then Luke Goody, if he's healthy all year, like Illinois three point shooting last year was really like relying on two guys and you're relying on Goody who didn't come back until late in the season. And then Matthew Meyer, who probably has a better percentage if he didn't shoot so poorly in the last couple of weeks of the season. Uh, and you know, Shannon is what he is at this point. He was pretty much the same at Texas tech when it came to three point shooting. So I don't expect, I expect Shannon to be a guy that's probably anywhere from 31 to 35. And that's is what he is. Um, sincere Harris is a better three point shooter than I would have expected given how bad he is from the free throw line. I don't think you can really expect much from him. I think Dre Gibbs Lawhorn, there's a question there of whether he can be like, I, I think one thing that Illinois has this year that they didn't have last year is like, they have legitimate guards that aren't just twos. Like they have like Justin Arman is probably a two, but like he could, he could bring up the ball in a certain role if they need him to. And they didn't have like Jaden Epps. He tried to play point, but that's a 6'2", undersized shooting guard. Like, he's not anything more than that. And the Sky Clark thing, I'm just going to pretend like that even never happened. So, I mean, I, I think that there's reason to believe they'll be better from three. I think they're the, – given the fact that they're a lot older this year overall, I think will be a big factor. But they're still going to have guys out there that shouldn't be shooting threes or can't shoot threes. And that's just the way it is. I think their percentage will slightly improve. I, it would be hard not to. Yeah, I, I think that – I don't see them having too many like elite shooters. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're hoping Goody um, can be on be that, but even then, like he's still not going to have like this insane volume from three. You mentioned Domosk, um, Harmon. I think both of them can shoot. Carrier from Oregon, he's shown upside as this kind of like stretch five type, almost like yeah. a Coleman Coleman Hawkins type build at least, but um, can shoot the ball. You mentioned Gibbs Lawhorn too. Like I think there's guys that are gonna that can be quality shooters. I don't know if they're I don't know if I trust anybody being like elite. Um so we mentioned two or I've just mentioned all three of the names, all three transfers in Harmon, Domas, and Gary. A. Um, who do you see having the biggest impact of the three and how important do you think of a role all three will play? Ooh, um, I do think that given some of the versatility stuff on offense, I think Marcus Damask, if he's healthy, is going to be the most impactful player in terms of scoring and a little bit of facilitating, which I think he can do both. I know he did both at Southern Illinois. Um, but I do think one guy that's going to have a big impact on one area of the game that's going to improve them is Quincy Garrier on the glass, I think is going to be a huge improvement for them. Um, and I do think Harmon's going to be an impact transfer, but I don't think that he'll be – kind of in the same level as the other two. But overall, I would say Damask has the most impact. I think Damask – I don't think any of the three start when the season begins. I think they're all going to come off the bench. But I think Damask is going to be fighting with Goody for that starting spot, uh, the guy that can kind of just play the three, play the two, kind of a hybrid role. And I think that Damask is probably – a he definitely is a better overall offensive player than Goody because he can do more, and we've seen him do more. Um, but I, I do think that Goody starts over him to begin the season, uh, but I think Damask is the most impactful transfer overall. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on Damask. Um, interesting that, yeah, I didn't think about him between Go him and Goody for the starting role mm -hmm. um, at the three spot, but yeah, that is probably who it's going to come down to. I just had Damask. I think um, he, you mentioned it. Like, he can just do a bit of everything on offense. Like He can shoot. He would post up some. He facilitated some. I think he was... I think he was second on the team in assist or, or he had a pretty high assist rate if i'm remembering correctly um just kind of feels like this illinois gadget player that they seem to to like to have at times even like you know coleman hawkins is sort of that at times just being able to do a bit of everything i'm excited to see how that fits in you're hoping the shooting sticks where it was i think he was like 35 or something like that percent mm -hmm. um 
Harmon's interesting to me because he just reminds me a lot of Shannon. I don't think he's as good as Shannon, but I feel like offensively they do a lot of the same things of really wanting to slash, get downhill, get out and run, get, you know, just get to the rim. Um, so I'm, for me, I just, I'm curious to see how that fits together for when they do play. I assume Harmon will be more of like a uh, subbing in for Shannon would be kind of just my guess because I think it's going to be harder to pair those two together. Yeah. The defense is, Legit though, so like that's that's gonna get Harmon minutes at times, um, and then you know Gary Ace, he's more of the wild card for me. I, I you know you mentioned the rebounding, like I think he could be a solid rebounder. You're hoping that the three point shooting is there uh, because he's been a guy that's kind of just floated away from the rim throughout his progressively throughout his career. Mm -hmm. um, started you know would shoot more inside to start his career, but now is more of a pure perimeter threat. To go along with the three transfers, though, there are three freshmen coming in and Dragib Lawhorn, Amani Hansberry, and Nicolo Moretti. Um, who excites you the most this season and long term out of those three? Um, I think this season, I think it's Dre Gibbs Lawhorn because I think he's going to play more than the other two. Um, I think that that's a guy that can run the one. He's very athletic. I think that's the number one thing that jumps off when you watch him play. Um, and I think the long term, I do think Hansberry is a very good player, and I don't think he's going to play as much this year as he should. Um, but I think long term, if Moretti pans out, I think you saw in Spain when he was playing a lot, a lot of the creativity stuff uh, with the the you know playmaking. And I think long term, he's the most exciting player because I think that's a guy that could be a legitimate three year starting point guard that can do a lot offensively when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to playmaking. And so long term, I would say Moretti, but I think this year, I think it's Gibbs Lawhorn. And I think Hansberry is a very exciting player. I just think he's too similar to some of the guys that they already have at those positions, like Gary. So I, I wonder how much he's actually going to play, especially since this team has so many players that can actually play. I think this team has like 13 guys that can play, and they're just not going to be able to do that. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm with you on for this year specifically, Gibbs Lawhorn. Um Depending on, you know, if he stays four years, I think he might be the best long term as well. I, I do like this class, though, just in general. Like you mentioned Moretti, who's uh, he could be this kind of he could be the answer to point guard at some point in his career for Illinois. He's going to mm -hmm. be more of a traditional point guard. Um, not, you know, I don't think he's like an elite scorer, but he's super crafty with the ball, can find different angles to make, you know, to find passes for for different guys. Um you know, I, I think eventually he can be that guy that you kind of run the offense through, let him set things up. Uh, Hansberry is, is you, I, I agree with what you said on him. Just like, he's probably more talented than how many minutes he'll get this year, just because mm -hmm. of, of who's all there, you know, Goody Hawkins, danger, um, Gary. A. I think, you know, I think he does fit into the Illinois system. Well, though, um, I like some of the inside game. I'm hoping that he can kind of develop more of a perimeter shot. He moved really, really well on the perimeter defensively, which I was surprised at, um, but he still has like a good physicality. So I'm excited to see him develop defensively because I think he could be, I think that's where he could really be good at. And then also just, I, I've made this note a few times throughout the off season, like Hansberry might just be the best pure screener coming into like in the big 10 next year. He, that was, it's a small thing, but it stood out so much when I watched this film is that he just made contact on screens. Like he legitimately freed up ball handlers on almost all of his screens. And that's just, you just don't see that anymore. And sometimes it's design slips and things like that. So it's a reason, but like for a lot of pick and rolls, if you watch, it's just, and just in, in general in college basketball, it's like, they don't actually hit the dude. Um, and, and then the point guard doesn't fully get free. Hansberry will. Gibbs Lawhorn is the most exciting for sure. Just because of the pure athleticism. He's a legitimate three level score. Um, and I think that's where he'll primarily be like called on is the scoring. Do you think he'll, do you think he's more of a point or a two guard for like this year, at least? I think for this year um, with the roster makeup, I think there's, you're going to see a lot of both, but I do think it's kind of going to come down to what does, does Brad Underwood have? What role does sincere Harris play? I think will be a factor here because I don't know if they view sincere Harris as their backup one because I think the starting one right now is Ty Rogers. Um, do they view Gibbs Law? Like, I, I really think that Gibbs Law is a better, better facilitator than Sincere Harris. So I think if you put him at the one with Harris at the two, you don't have the most size there. Um, so I don't know if those guys can really be on the court at the same time, because I do think if you have Gibbs Lawhorn running the point, you'd like a Justin Harmon type 
with him at the two. Um, so I think that's going to, it's kind of going to come down to what they do with Sincer Harris this year. That's fair. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. He can be, I think he can be a combo guard. Mm-hmm. I think I like him personally more at the two, but he's going to, he's, he's more than capable of playing the one. And that's the other big uh, question that surrounded Illinois for, it seems like five months now is, is what's going to happen at this point guard spot last year. It was kind of uh, scrambling to just plug and play who would, who was hot at the moment, who could kind of play point guard. You've already mentioned Rodgers. That's been kind of the hype this offseason is Rodgers playing point guard. What do you kind of see for that role in general? Is it going to be more just a committee? Do you think it's more like Rodgers is going to play 25 minutes there? Um, and what do you kind of think happens at the point guard position? And I and I guess like in Illinois system, what do you think the point guard like needs to do? You know? Yeah, I think um, I think it's Ty Rodgers' job. I think that they're going to roll with it. I think they're going to embrace it. Um, we saw a little bit of it last season. I think with this roster makeup and kind of what Brad Underwood wants to do, I think facilitating and not having a score first point guard is going to be the key. And that's not what Ty Rogers is. Ty Rogers is really only capable of scoring from, you know, eight feet and in, you know, maybe less than that. So that's the big thing. Like I, I understood the want for Ray J Dennis in the off season. I know Illini fans really wanted him. I wanted him at first too. But then if you, if you take a couple steps back, you look at it, it's like Ray J Dennis, obviously is a better player. I mean, there's no doubt about it, but is the score first point guard really going to work for this offense? Like last year, Jaden Epps was running the point a lot. That's a score first point guard and Coleman Hawkins trying to run the point. It's just not going to work long-term because you need him under the basket he can score – like Coleman Hawkins, pretty underrated scorer inside. Like he can do it. Like he did it pretty well in some of those games last season in the Big Ten. So I think it's Ty Rogers' job. I think they're going to roll with it. I'm a little concerned about how they approach guarding smaller ones, um, but I don't think college basketball is as prevalent with that, especially in the Big Ten. There's not a ton of smaller ones. Um, yeah. But I do think that it's Ty Rogers' job. I think he's going to play a lot of it. Um, I think that they just need a guy that can, you know, make plays and move around and pass. And uh, I think we need to see a lot more of that than we saw, you know, a lot of ISO ball from Terrence Shannon last year in a lot of games. They don't really need that. Uh, They need somebody that can run the offense. And if you look at Brad Underwood teams in the past, I think this resembles more of a Stephen F. Austin Brad Underwood team than he's had at Illinois. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting with Rodgers there um, for a lot of the reasons that you said. And then also defensively, like, you know, maybe they do struggle against smaller ones in that. But if if Rodgers is starting, that's a starting lineups all six, six plus. And that was mm-hmm. kind of I felt like Illinois, the offense was all over the place, but the defense was consistent. Um, I think, you know, having just that much length, Rodgers moves pretty well. Obviously, Shannon, is we already mentioned, was is um, really athletic. Even Hawkins like can be fine on the perimeter. Like that's you, Illinois started out switching five ways last year, and then eventually it, they got more stable. At once they switched out of that, kept more Danger more in a drop, things like that. Um, so Danger is probably the one player that won't be able to switch five ways. But all the other four on that uh, starting potential starting lineup, whether it be Damask or, or Goody, like it's not may, maybe it isn't ideal to have them on ones, but you can switch most things. Um, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see if that gets incorporated. In terms of the offense, though, like I think I'm bought in to Rodgers being a point guard because he isn't, you know, he isn't a scorer. He's a really good defender, and he can, he can facilitate some. And but then more than that, for me, it's the team itself. Like they have players that move the ball well. Domask, it was tw- he had an assist rate of 26.3 percent, which is 155th in the country. Harmon was 20 percent. Hawkins, Shannon were both 17 percent. You know, they there isn't maybe this. Um, normal, you know, point guard facilitator on the roster, but like there's a bunch of guys that can facilitate given what is needed from them. And I think if, as long as you have enough guys that can move the ball, it's sh- there's at least a, you know, a chance for success. Um, it's going to be interesting, you know, what exactly even like if Rogers is point, is it, you know, picking roles in that and trying to get him downhill and facilitate from there? What, what exactly? I'm interested to see what it is, but I think Brad is going to have to be a bit creative, um, with even with that usage uh, with Rodgers and things like that. So one player that we've kind of not really mentioned on, but should be a pretty big part of this roster is Dane Danger. Uh, had a solid year last year, 
um, in his first like full season of, of basketball in college. What are you hoping to see from him in this next upcoming season and how good do you think he can be? Yeah, I think this is going to be a huge season for him. I think he's going to be much improved. Um, one thing that I'd like to see is some better numbers against the Big Ten opponents. I think you saw, you know, last year, if you look at his games, he had a great game against uh, against Michigan State. Um, he had a couple good games mixed in there against, you know, Rutgers and Iowa and, uh, you know, but but a lot of his dominance was early in the season where we saw him score, you know, 20 and 15 um, against Kansas City and, you know, 15 plus against other opponents like that. Um, I think you're going to see a more energetic version. I think he slimmed down a little bit over the offseason. I think that'll help. Um, I think you're going to see a guy that's a much more useful defender in terms of not just blocking shots. I think you'll see more of that. And I think one thing that'll be big for him is, you know, whether whether we see the help of Hawkins or Gary a when they're in with him, I think those guys can take a little bit of pressure off of him on either end. Um, I think Dane Danger is going to have a big season. And I don't think they need a ton from him. Like I think if Dane Danger gives you 12 points, eight rebounds, I think that that's, pretty good I mean I don't know what his numbers were exactly last year but I do know that you know he was pretty uh, efficient offensively shooting 63 percent so um, I think he'll definitely improve this season and I think it says a lot that Brad Underwood wants him to stay here wanted him to stay here he probably wasn't going to leave really no matter what but um, I think he'll be the starting five when the season begins and I don't think he's going to leave it this time yeah, I think it's his job to lose. I don't see really anybody taking it from him. Uh, he averaged 9.5 points and 5.5 rebounds last year, and like he basically was 20 minutes a game, I think. Um, yeah, 20.5 minutes a game. So, yeah, I think it's realistic to see that bump up to a 12-7, and 12-8 and eight type. And if that happens, then he's a, probably, what, a top four center in the Big Ten, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and that'll be super important because now – you saw it a little bit with Illinois is this, this guy that can be the go-to at times. Um, he doesn't have to be like you said, and maybe Illinois is probably at their best if he's like a really good second or third option. Um, I'm just, I'm excited to see him develop. I think he has really, really good footwork. Um, and mm -hmm. that just kind of excites me. His post moves, like I thought were, were good. He reminds me a lot of Travion Williams for a couple of years ago, like taking out the passing part because Travion was, uh, one of one for passing from a big, but just the way that they move, the ability to kind of shake guys in the post, um, you know, one dribble spin, kind of go baseline scoop, like just all sorts of things that I think can lead him to be a top four center, get to that 12 and eight, like we kind of mentioned. So uh, one last big question, and just a couple small ones before we get you out of here, but we I already kind of alluded to this earlier with the, the size that Illinois has. Do you think that this team's identity is going to lie more on their defense again? I think it has to. I mean, I think that if there's any sure things with this year's team, and I think a lot of it for me is wait and see, I think they're going to be able to defend really well because they have a lot of good in individual defenders. And the switching defense this year should work better, like you mentioned earlier, because a lot of the problems with that last year were Meyer and Melendez. Like a lot of the problems when it came to switching on defense were those two making mistakes. And Matthew Meyer – the only thing he provided on the defensive end for Illinois was blocking shots because he was great at that last year. I still think this team can block shots. Like Danger, Hawkins, Garrier, those are guys that can block shots. I think that they have a terrific collection of defensive guards, uh, maybe amongst the best in the Big Ten for that. Um, and I think that they have a lot of versatile defenders. And I think a lot of what was said going into the season last year without versatile Illinois could be on the defensive end is actually going to be the reality this year. It's yeah, I, I kind of already mentioned it too. Like there's going to be a ton of options for Brad Underwood to have on defense. Now mm -hmm. it's um, there really isn't going to be too many weak links on this roster on that end. So, like even Gibbs Lawhorns who's smaller, like he still moves well. So it'll be interesting to see how he kind of fits in. Um, Rogers, we already said is, is, you know, he's a six foot six beast. He moves really well. Um, I think this team got, is going to have to rely on the defense again. They were number 26 in compound last year. They were one of the best rim protectors in the country. Um, pull, I'm trying to look at the exact – yeah, 95th percentile in uh, defensive rim percentage. So uh, just one of the best in the country, had one of the highest block rates. I agree that you know losing Meyer on that end isn't going to be too big of a deal because 
there are guys that still can kind of do what he did. Um, it's going to, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this defense is because I think there is so much versatility and they'll be able to probably press some if they wanted, they can speed teams up or they could probably slow things down and, and kind of grind things out that, that way too. So it's going to be interesting. So two quicker questions. Uh, one is just what player are you most excited to watch on this roster next year? Um, hmm. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with a newcomer. I'm gonna go with Marcus Damas because I'll be interested to see how his game translates from Southern Illinois to Illinois. Um, I do think the reason that he won't start to start the season is because I think Brad Underwood really really likes Luke Goody, and I think it could be good to have kind of a spot up shooter alongside you know Rogers and Shannon and Hawkins in the lineup. Now I think Damas could do it either way. I think. Whether Damascus is starting or whether he's the sixth man, I think he's going to be a really, really big addition. And I, and I don't think there's any doubt that a lot of what he did at Southern Illinois can translate into the Big Ten. I think there's a reason they went out and got him. And uh, I think it's going to be a good fit. And I think that, you know, um, he's going to put up good numbers. And I think that he'll he'll really do well. Yeah, I'm with you there. My For me, it's Coleman Hawkins. Like I kind of said, like, mm-hmm. I just love watching him play. Even the craziness, like, um, I will kind of always stand for him. And then I think that he is, he has some of the most talent probably in the big 10, just pure talent. Yeah. Like um, he just makes some plays that nobody else. No, honestly, he makes some plays that nobody else is like willing to try whether yeah. let alone execute. Um, and that just, I'm going to always be a Coleman Hawkins fan and it is what it is uh, through the, through the good and bad. So last thing, and then we'll get you out of here is, just the overall keys to the season for you. Like if this Illinois team is going to be, you know, competing in the upper echelon of the big 10 and um, advancing and then say turning me attorney, like what are some of the things that you think will need to happen? Well, I think one is something that's already been mentioned, which is their defense has to be as good or better. Um, last season's team from a defensive standpoint was, um, you know, nearly, as good as we've seen from Brad Underwood at Illinois, I think the 2021 team is the only team that had a better defensive efficiency uh, rating on Ken Palm. So uh, they were top 30. They need to do that again, which I think they will. I think a lot of what we saw in Spain was kind of night and day. I know the numbers look similar in their exhibitions in terms of not shooting threes very well and a couple other issues, free throws, I guess. But this team is faster. This team is more versatile. This team is um, – I think going to fly at the rim more on both ends, which I think is important, especially rebounding. Um, So I think that those things need to translate over. Uh, I think the three point shooting will just automatically be better because it was terrible last year. Um, I think that's going to be somewhat of an improvement. And I think that this locker room is going to be a big part of this. I think getting leaders back, like you bring Shannon and Hawkins back. Those are two leadership guys, no matter what anybody says about last season, it's just last season just slipped away. I, there were some weird personalities in the room last year, and it just clearly wasn't working out. Um, but I think this program, this season, is set up a lot more for success than last season. And I know a lot of it looks the same going in, but I think it's going to be a lot different. And I think it's going to be a blessing in disguise that they lost as many players from last year that played minutes, like Epps, Meyer. Um, and then Melendez and Clark, those guys being gone, I think is going, it's a good thing in the long run for this season. So um, I think there's a number of things that need to go right. I think their non-conference schedule is solid. I think they get some really, really good tests from that, whether it's Marquette, Tennessee, Florida Atlantic, the Missouri game is always a disaster every year. So that'll be a big challenge for them. And uh, their Big Ten schedule, I haven't gone too deep into that yet. Last year was pretty easy going in wasn't as easy overall, but um, I think this team should be top five in the Big Ten. I don't think that there's a – there's. I think a lot would have to go wrong for them not to be. I don't think they're at the same level as a Purdue or Michigan State, but I think that they're in the level below those teams. Um, so, and I, you know, like I said, Shannon and Hawkins not being back would be a disaster. And to your Coleman Hawkins point from earlier, I think – we're going to look back on it 15 years from now, and he's going to be a really underappreciated player in the scope of the Big Ten because I don't think people give him enough credit, uh, especially Illini fans. So hopefully people see that. I don't know if they will, but um, there's a lot that needs to go, a lot that will go better this season. I think this season will just be more enjoyable overall because last year was such a roller coaster. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm i with you on the 
uh, I guess, well, I guess top six. They're in the second tier for me. That's like um, yeah. the group of four-ish teams for me. Like I could see them being, th- I mean, I could see them being top two even, but like realistically, I can see them being anywhere three from three to six. Like the talent mm-hmm. is just too good. The keys kind of for me is, is pretty much just summarizing this whole thing, right? Is you just want more, some more consistent play, which we've, you know, we mentioned kind of the locker room and things like that, that could all lead to more consistent play. Uh, that leads also into shooting, which needs to just be better. The defense needs to be really, really good again and have to rely on it. And then just figuring out whatever whatever way and usage the point guard has has to be, whoever it is, like just figuring out that rotation at that spot. Um, and then which should allow, you know, guys like Shannon and Hawkins to even be more productive. So yeah. uh, this is a team I'm looking forward to watching. I'm they're they're gonna probably be one of my favorite teams, at least early on uh, to watch. I'll probably tune into a little bit more of their games just because I think there are a ton of questions though. Like we 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 both seem to be in agreement that you know top five top six team, but like there is the scenario that things don't go go well with these kind of new additions and that and then they drop um but i'm excited so appreciate you coming on ethan let everybody know where they can find you yeah you can uh check out my twitter at ethan carter sw uh it's on the screen there um you can check out our Illini basketball podcast uh, anywhere you get your podcasts uh, we have a Twitter account at Podcast Illini, so you can check all that out. We'll be back uh, during the regular season all throughout into all that, and we do a lot of episodes and, and stuff like that, so you can check all that out, and uh, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, this was fun. Uh, definitely go check his stuff out. The links will be down in the description. Thank you all for watching. If you are watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. These Big Ten team previews are about to wrap up. We're going to start getting into some you know preseason award seasons and then uh, just – dissecting the game as we get into the year if you are listening on audio we are on apple google and spotify podcast please give a five-star review if you do enjoy just helps us be able helps me be able to put out more content you can follow me on twitter at joe jackson cbb Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in and we'll catch you in the next one